Hello guys, in our last section we worked with RBAC components and some security features in Y2 Framework. Now let's see the fourth section of this course, i.e. caching. Each server has its own limit for resources. Often our web application should generate the same data to create web pages. However, sometimes this generation is difficult and time consuming for the server. If visitors make several requests per second, this may overload our server and slow down its work. So what can we do? How to resolve this glitch? Caching is the solution. We can save recently generated data in some storage and then retrieve it each time we need it. Fortunately, we can do it very easily with Y2 Framework. In this section, we will learn some techniques on how to reduce server load drastically. We will learn how to store some data in cache and how to retrieve it later. How to store an HTML fragment in cache or the whole web page or even all HTTP request and finally how to combine or compress JS and CSS files before sending them to the clients. So let's move on to the video 4.1 Improving the performance of high load. We will learn how to increase performance drastically by reusing recently generated data instead of processing it again and again on each user request. Cache system will make our web application faster and will help avoid server overloading. How to get things done. Y2 framework caching components make it simple. We will learn how to store recently generated data in cache and retrieve it later. How to cache table schema and how to use caching for database queries. In our previous video, we worked with username encryption and decryption on user profile page, and we used randomly generated secret key for that. Now, just to see how caching works, let's cache our random key for 10 seconds so that it will not be generated on each page reload. The secret key will be generated again only 10 seconds after it has been cached. Now, first of all, we read cached random key from cache. If there is no data with random key or it has expired, Cache always returns false value. If cache returns false, we generate the secret key. Store it in the cache with random key for 10 seconds and then use it into the view. Now, if you update user profile page every second, you can see that the generated key is not changed and it updates just 10 seconds after it has been stored to cache. Well done. Note the secret key, cached for all users now. But if you need to cache some value for each user separately, just add user ID to the key of cache data. So, for example, we need to use random six key to store secret key for user ID six and retrieve it. If you want, you can also add additional params to your cache key. You can find all the additional information on the web page www.yeframework.com forward slash doc 2.0 guide caching data. Each time when you make a database query, Y2 Framework reads the table metadata beforehand. This helps Y2 Framework to prepare the query. If your application often uses database, such reads of table metadata may make your application slower. If your database structure does not change too often, we can just cache all tables, metadata, and that's it. How to do that? Fortunately, in Y2 Framework, we may add just with one line of code and it works. I suggest you to have a look at www.yframework.com forward slash doc 2.0 slash yedbconnection page. 
dollar enable schema cache variable. There is documentation on how it works. To cache all tables metadata, we need to add just one line to our config file, to db component. Let's do it. We add that line, save the code. Now we update the same user profile page the first time to store the table metadata in cache. Then update the page a second time. Look at the log and instead of three DB queries, the number has been reduced to one. This cached metadata is now available for all users and it will be updated one hour later by default. With one line of code, we made our application faster. Incredible! But we can store in cache not only table metadata, but the DB query results as well. How to achieve that? Let's look at www.yeframework.com forward slash doc 2.0 guide caching data. Section Query Caching. As you can see, we can store DB query results in cache if we use some construction with an anonymous function. Let's do that. We add the database component, use its cache function, and in anonymous function, we add $ID variable from parent function as well. And we return the current user model with the user ID specified in $ID variable. Save this code, update the page. And it works! Great! During the first user request, we store DB query results in cache. And during second request, we just retrieve them from cache instead of making slow database query again. No query is shown in the log, but you may cache it on your own if you want. That brings us to the end of the first video. In this video, we learned how to cache custom data and get it from cache, how to cache table metadata, and how to cache all DB query results. In the next video, we will see how to work with fragment, page, and HTTP caching. Thank you for your time.